a small town near Tarnov, away from everything and, I suppose, everyone. It's fair to say we enjoyed a quiet life. We both had a stable job. She worked in the pharmacy, attending to the few residents of the town, while I worked as a courier, a delivery man in the surrounding area. Life was simply beautiful. And as was normal in places as quiet as Tarnov, there was very rarely any important news that I might deliver in the mail. In fact, I think the most exciting thing I've delivered so far this year was a package of crockery to an old lady in the square. (laughs) But circumstances like this never last. Things declined, and one day everything changed. Cold and fog flooded the streets and houses of Tarnov. Silence dominated the surrounding villages. The German army had issued an order for the expulsion of all Jews from the area. The terror of what we'd experienced in the time leading to that point coursed through our minds like a hell from which we never returned. And it was I who had the duty of delivering this news to the villagers. It was I who sent them to meet their fate. And amongst the musty, heartless pile of deportation orders, there was one in my possession that froze me to the core. I shuddered. The address, number 4 Targofa Street, was my own. It was our address. And then I saw the order inside. I was paralyzed. It instructed all Jews to assemble at the train station on December the 14th. In two days' time, I somehow regained my control, left all the work I had to do and ran straight home. I wanted to be with Renée for as long as was physically possible, but I couldn't tell her what was going to happen. She would suffer more than I could bear and our little remaining time together would be ruined. When I arrived home early, I explained that I'd taken a few days off work to spend some time with her. It pains me to recall how passionately I hugged her, fighting back the tears with all the strength I could muster. I kept repeating how much I loved her, and then came the day. It was three in the morning, of course I didn't sleep. The train would leave at six. I got out of bed and just stared at her, peacefully, innocently and naively sleeping. It was beautiful agony, contemplating, not ever seeing her again. I quietly took the suitcase from the closet to the living room and packed some clothes along with my favourite pictures of her and a couple of my parents. At least I'd never forget their faces. I put on my coat and gloves, picked up the suitcase along with the order letter and took one last tearful look at Renée, taking her all in as best I could. With trembling hands, I hesitantly opened the door and left the house. I momentarily looked back and spotted Louis, our dog, looking at me from the window, but with a sorrowful expression that suggested he knew it were a final farewell. The dreadful sense that I wasn't going to see Renée again further sank in. What chance did a simple courier like me have of returning from, or from wherever we'd end up? My laboured steps sank and crunched into the snow. As I passed through the village, I I stole glances through the windows of the houses, all marked with the Star of David. 
Seeing parents with young children gathering their belongings for what I suspected would be the last time only added to my mounting grief. As I approached the station, I was startled by the long line of people waiting at Platform 4, all expressionless but oddly compliant. Groups of men, women and children, all to be transferred directly to the labour camps, but with hope, hope that one day we would return home. I already had one foot stepping inside the carriage when a sudden voice pierced the heavy atmosphere and echoed to and from every corner of the station. It was Renee, calling my name, searching for me among the crowd of Jews edging towards the carriages in front of the SS. Should I get on the train, or should I turn around and attempt to hug her one last time? My decision was made for me when I saw her negotiating with an officer in a bid to get herself on the train with me. I instinctively ran towards her. As soon as she distinguished me from the rest of the crowd, she too turned and ran to me. And such was the force of our final reunion that we fell to the ground, adrenaline surging. But the intensity of the moment took a turn when an SS soldier grabbed her, forcefully pulling her away from me. It was then, in my struggle to hold on to her, that she saw the order letter I was still clutching in my hand. It was then that she understood what had really happened. The name that was written on it was the one of René. Thank you.